Okay, let's let's get started for the afternoon session. It's a pleasure to introduce Oleg Lusovi of Tua. He's going to tell us about Penleve and Hoyne equations and conformal blocks. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, can you hear me? Does the microphone work? Uh, okay. So, <coughs> uh, uh, many thanks to the organizers of this nice uh, meeting, and also. Thanks to everyone who is still here. Um, so uh, let me start my talk with some general comment. So we will be concerned with uh, linear ODEs, uh, either a scalar second ODE uh, of uh, this form, so basically a Schrodinger equation with some potential, or uh, rank two linear systems uh, of this form, and both uh, V and A will be assumed to be uh, rational functions, or uh, A of Z will be two by two rational matrix. And uh, we will uh, actually focus on the equation of uh, Fuchsian type. And uh, <coughs> so what we are really interested in is um, the global behavior of uh, solutions of these equations, which is encoded in quantities such as uh, monodromy and mm, connection matrices. So in the uh, classical monodromy theory, there are uh, essentially two big questions. So there is this problem A. So uh, to calculate the monodromy when the differential equation is given. And uh, the second question is to determine the differential equation this is a prescribed monodromy. Now, the simplest cases, uh, uh, you, all of you know, of course, so they, they, they correspond to uh, Gauss hyper, uh, hypergeometric function uh, and uh, its degenerations, such as Bessel and Airy. And in more complicated examples, uh, when you have, uh, well, more uh, Fuchsian singular points, you end up with uh, equations of uh, Hoyne type, uh, various unharmonic oscillators, and uh, you have uh, qualitatively uh, new problems which appear, so you have to solve for uh, accessory parameters. In the case of uh, scalar ODEs, uh, uh, you, you have to deal with Penleve functions when you deal with linear systems. And it turns out that uh, in those cases, um, there are uh, very uh, interesting new insights uh, to the solutions of these problems A and B coming from conformal fit theory. So over the years, uh, there uh, has been actually a number of uh, connections uh, uh, which were discovered relating uh, the two-dimensional CFT to, to, to linear ODEs. So Davide has uh, discussed one of them, the ODE IM correspondence. So I will be focusing on uh, three uh, other examples. So the, uh, the first of them is the uh, conjecture by Zamologico. So this is from the very early days of uh, 2D CFT. So Zamologico has related the accessory parameter function in Hoyne uh, equation to uh, the so-called quasi-classical uh, conformal block, so denoted W here. Then uh, another uh, paradigmatic example is uh, a relation between the general solution of uh, Penleve 6 equation. So this is the so-called tau function of uh, Penleve 6 associated to generic mm, solution. So it can also be expressed in terms of special uh, functions of the same kind. So this Virasora conformal blocks. But now uh, the central charge of the Virasora algebra is uh, equal to one instead of infinity. And uh, maybe the, the, the most recent uh, uh, result uh, is this um, uh, observation or conjecture by uh, Bonelli, Yosa, uh, Pane, uh, and Tanzini, who have uh, argued that the connection problem for Hoyne equation can also be uh, solved in terms of uh, basically the same function W, which appears here. So the quasi-classical Virasora conformal block, except that now, uh, well, you have to, well, I will explain, you have to differentiate with respect to 
uh, <coughs> local monodromy instead of uh, positions of singularities. So my goal today will be to explain uh, these correspondences and show how uh, some of the implications uh, on the differential equation side can be checked uh, very often by very elementary means, and sometimes they can be even proved rigorously. Okay, so this is roughly the plan. Uh, uh, <coughs> there will be almost no uh, new results in what I'm going to discuss. So the only new results will appear in this uh, last point when I will check this uh, Hoyne connection uh, formula uh, prediction using the Darbu theorem, which has already appeared in numerous talks uh, in this workshop. Okay, so let's start with the uh, most elementary example, so the hypergeometric equation. Um, uh, so this is the, uh, the potential. This is a pictorial uh, representation of the potential. So this is supposed to uh, represent the Riemann sphere, and uh, so the three holes correspond to three second-order poles of, the, uh, quad of this quadratic differential. Uh, and, uh, well, you have uh, three parameters which uh, encode local monodromy or the singular behavior of uh, Frobenius solutions near the singularities. And, uh, well, basically you have no uh, further freedom, so this is the only expression that you can have if you require no more than uh, three uh, second-order poles of these guys. Okay, now Frobenius solutions... Um, uh, provide distinguished basis of uh, solutions of our hypergeometric ODE, uh, which diagonalize the operators of analytic continuation around the singular points. So <coughs> the uh, local monodromy exponents, which appear in formulas like, like these formulas here, so they can be uh, encoded into the Riemann scheme. Uh, so this Riemann scheme uh, corresponds to the equation I am using. One can, of course, uh, shift the exponents by a gauge transformation to, to move to the canonical form, but it will be uh, useful uh, for us to, to, to work uh, with, with the normal form because it uh, respects uh, some discrete uh, symmetry, and in particular, this allows to formulate some results it's in a much more compact way. So one of these is the following. So uh, suppose we take a basis uh, of a Frobenius solution at a regular sing singular point z equal to zero. So there is uh, this relation uh, to uh, another canonical base associated to the singular point z equal to one. And uh, so the, uh, uh, the coefficients which uh, appear in this uh, linear combination are uh, elements of the so-called connection matrix. But actually, because precisely we have this, uh, uh, this symmetry uh, uh, with respect to the flip of uh, local monodromy exponent theta, so this uh, connection matrix will be actually expressed in terms of just one single function. Uh, which I will call connection function. And in the hypergeometric case, so this is just some ratio of gamma, which you can compute either using contour integrals or uh, Darbu or any other uh, uh, favorite method. Now, uh, uh, let us notice that uh, in the hypergeometric case, uh, the uh, monodromy, or more precisely, the uh, conjugacy class of uh, monodromy of solutions does not uh, have any extra parameter. So all of the monodromy is completely fixed by uh, the local exponents, and this is the so-called rigidity property. Now, <coughs> if you go to Hoyne equation, so this is no longer the case. Uh, so what's going on here is that, uh, well, the second-order poles at 0, 1, infinity, and uh, some fourth uh, regular singularity, which I call t. So this part of the potential is uh, written in complete analogy uh, to what I have said before. But now we can add one more term without spoiling the uh, singularity structure. 
And in this term, you have this uh, quantity epsilon, which is the accessory parameter. So this accessory parameter is not fixed uh, by local monodromy. So <coughs> uh, in what follows, uh, we will uh, construct uh, various perturbative uh, expansions for uh, well, accessory parameter function and for uh, connection matrices. So we need some uh, small parameter here. So the small parameter will be the position of uh, this uh, fourth regular singular point. Uh, <coughs> so I assume for definiteness that uh, so the, the absolute value of t is greater than one. So this is purely conventional. So, so I could put, instead of uh, tangent t to infinity, I could collide this uh, singular point in, with any other, zero or one. Uh, but uh, we will stick to this uh, conven convention in what follows. Okay, <clears throat> so now <clears throat> what is the uh, space of monodromy data for uh, uh, our Hoyne equation? So naively we could uh, write uh, uh, something of this form. So we have four regular singularities, so, so we should have four monodromy matrices which multiply to uh, identity. And uh, the eigenvalues of these matrices should, of course, be related to local monodromy exponents. And we want to consider this up to overall conjugation related to the freedom in the choice of the basis. Now, this is a little bit uh, um, naive uh, uh, point of view, as I, I will explain uh, in a moment. But still, if, uh, if we consider this uh, space uh, 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 described by this line, so we can uh, make a rough dimension count and <coughs> realize that, uh, that the space is two-dimensional. And in order to parameterize uh, the monodromy, we can use, for example, uh, the uh, trace uh, functions, such as these traces of composite monodromies along uh, this cycle here or along uh, this cycle here. So typically uh, the uh, parameters uh, like sigma and uh, sigma prime, this will be related to eigenvalues of this composite monodromy. So this is one possible choice. And another possibility is uh, to use the pair uh, uh, epsilon and t, so the parameters which appear in the equation. Uh, now, the, uh, the map which sends the equation uh, data to monodromy data is, uh, well, locally it is well behaved, but still this is very transcendental map. And uh, it is uh, very difficult to describe. Uh, in fact, we uh, do not even know uh, what is the image of this map. So naively, we, uh, we, we, we could expect the image of the map to be the whole of, uh, of, uh, of the space, but it's not true. There are <coughs> monodromies which are impossible to realize as uh, uh, monodromies of Hoyne type equation. But we believe that for, uh, generic, uh, for, for, for sufficiently generic monodromy data, so we can locally, we have a local bijection between uh, this, uh, this type of, sorry, between <coughs> this type of data and this type of data, okay? So one can ask, uh, so this uh, problem A, direct problem, the inverse problem, and the uh, connection to conformal field theory uh, actually appears in a kind of mixed uh, problem where we uh, fix one parameter on the right, uh, so one of this composite monodromy exponent sigma, one parameter uh, on the left, uh, so the singularity position t, and uh, in this way, so the accessory uh, parameter becomes a function of, uh, of sigma and t. So this is the function which appears in this uh, zomological conjecture, which uh, expresses it as a derivative of the quasi-classical conformal block. So on the differential equation side, this is uh, something which you can uh, compute 
first of all, in the form of a perturbative series. Uh, so, for example, uh, the counterpart of this function for Mathieu equation, so the series you can find in Whitaker Watson, in uh, Erdely, and, and so on. But uh, it is also implemented numerically for Mathieu equation in Mathematica. So this is actually uh, something quite uh, well known. Um, <coughs> right, so now on the Penoulet uh, side, so on the linear system side, instead of uh, uh, taking a scalar uh, equation, we take this, uh, this, uh, this system, this two by two matrix A of Z, where the eigenvalues of the residue matrices uh, describe the uh, local monodromy. The uh, space of monodromy data looks more or less the same up to some uh, uh, minus signs. And uh, if you work again just a little bit, you can realize that uh, if you consider all such systems uh, up to constant gauge uh, transformations, then the corresponding space is again two dimensional. So one can, in, uh, one can parameterize the systems with some pair of coordinates, uh, uh, say P and Q. And <coughs> uh, uh, so for every fixed singularity position, we have then a map between the uh, moduli space of this Fuchsian systems and uh, 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 the moduli space of uh, monodromy data. So one of the convenient local coordinates is the uh, zero of this uh, off diagonal element uh, of A of Z. And it turns out that, uh, so if you now vary uh, the, the, uh, the, the variable T, and require that the monodromy of the system, so the point to which you map your Fuchsian system in here, if it remains constant, then uh, 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 this guy becomes a function of t, and as a function of t, it solves uh, the general uh, Penlevé 6 uh, uh, equation, where the parameters are related to, <coughs> to this uh, local monodromy exponent. So, uh, alternatively, instead of using this uh, uh, P and Q, one can parameterize uh, uh, the, uh, the matrix A of Z uh, using the so-called uh, tau function, which is basically some convenient uh, combination of matrix elements of the residue ma matrices, right? And so the statement is, uh, is this. So if uh, we are able to construct uh, a fundamental matrix solution with the required uh, monodromy, required singularity property, then uh, we can find uh, the corresponding matrix A of Z, given our Fuchsian system. And out of A of Z, we uh, uh, obtain, by this formula here, the, uh, uh, the general solution of Penlevé 6, which is uh, associated to this monodromy. So the, the monodromy plays the role of uh, two integration constants for this uh, second order nonlinear equation. So the, 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 the nonlinear equation itself, we do not even need to write it because it's, uh, it's actually easier to write the solution than, than the differential equation itself. <coughs> okay, so now let me turn to uh, conformal blocks. So I will, in this part, I will be very schematic. So uh, let us um, uh, consider some uh, uh, number of points uh, on the Riemann sphere. And um, a conformal block will be a, a multivariate formal series uh, in uh, the po positions of uh, these points, so the, uh, the ratios like uh, T1 or, or over T2 and so on, uh, which uh, can be assigned uh, to, uh, to trivalent graph, uh, graphs like this. So this uh, trivalent graph, if you uh, remember uh, the pictures uh, that I have shown you before, 
or uh, Hoyne equation. So may, you may already suspect that uh, this trivalent uh, graphs uh, will have something to do with this uh, uh, pan's de uh, decompositions of the Riemann sphere. And indeed, so, <coughs> so the, uh, the uh, parameters attached uh, to the edges of this graph will uh, ultimately become uh, the, the monodromy parameters in our uh, differential equations. Right, and so <coughs> to, uh, to every such data, so to every choice of uh, such uh, trivalent graph with attached uh, complex uh, labels, you can uh, associate such uh, formal multivariate series uh, and the coefficients of the series, they are completely fixed by the uh, commutation relations of the uh, Virasoro algebra. And moreover, uh, there is, in, at least in the most important cases, there is even an explicit combinatorial uh, formula for the, uh, for, 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 this, uh, for the coefficients of the series in terms of sums over tuples of partitions. Now, <coughs> The important thing here is that uh, um, uh, conformal field theory provides you uh, some very good intuition about the uh, analytic uh, properties of this conformal block, about convergence and about uh, um, analytic continuation of this function uh, in every variable. <coughs> and in the simplest case, where you have just uh, uh, for uh, external edges, you can think of this uh, function of, uh, <coughs> of, uh, of T as a clever uh, generalization of the usual uh, Gauss hypergeometric function, but containing uh, three more parameters. So we have uh, five uh, conformal weights attached to edges and the Virasoro central, ch uh, central charge. In what uh, follows, uh, we will, uh, it will be actually useful to use uh, some other letters instead of central charge and conformal dimensions. So sometimes we will trade conformal dimensions for momenta, which will be denoted by P, and uh, the central charge will be parameterized by this Liouville parameter <coughs> called B. Uh, <coughs> so now, <coughs> Um, somehow, uh, in order to make this connection to uh, ordinary differential equations, I need some differential uh, equations uh, on the uh, CFT side, and this comes, uh, this comes from the so-called uh, Belavin polyakov zamolochikov constraints. So these are uh, PDEs satisfied by uh, conformal blocks involving fields with uh, special uh, dimensions. Uh, so I think I do not even write uh, the formula for the special dimensions, but uh, so the, the, the two uh, important properties uh, of these uh, degenerate fields are the following. So first of all, in, uh, when, you, uh, uh, when you fuse a generic degenerate field with a, a generic primary, so you can only have two uh, uh, possible uh, dimensions, po two possible momenta in the intermediate channel. So this is one thing. And the other thing is this, uh, this PDE, uh, which is uh, uh, a second order uh, uh, PDE in the position of degenerate field and the first order in position of, of other fields, which is satisfied by the corresponding conformal block. Now, in the case, uh, in the simplest case where you have just uh, four uh, point uh, conformal block like this one. So this PDE actually becomes uh, an ODE, which is simply the hypergeometric equation. So you can just uh, write the corresponding con conformal block explicitly. <coughs> okay, and uh, the uh, hypergeometric connection formulas, which I have shown you before, uh, can be interpreted as the uh, fusion uh, transformations for the uh, corresponding conformal blocks. Uh, uh, so, uh, 
the, uh, the, the important point uh, here is the following. So if uh, you know the, uh, uh, the diffusion uh, transformation for uh, an elementary conformal block like this, then you have exactly the same uh, uh, transformation. So think of this as being a kind of connection formula. So you have exactly the same uh, connection formula for more compl complicated conformal blocks where here you have, you can attach an arbitrary, uh, an arbitrary tree with arbitrary complex labels. The formula here doesn't change. So this is somehow what uh, CFT tells you. And uh, this property can uh, now be used to very quickly establish the connection to, uh, to isomonodromy theory. So <clears throat> the uh, analytic uh, continuation of a co conformal block with respect to position of degenerate field. So if you try to move this point uh, Z over the Riemann sphere, so all you have to do is to use this uh, fusion transformations systematically. So basically all what you are using are uh, hypergeometric connection formulas. And what, what you end up with uh, after analytic continuation, it's always a sum of, the, uh, of conformal blocks of the very same kind. Uh, the only difference uh, w w which you can get is that in the intermediate uh, momenta can get shifted by uh, integer multiples of this UV parameter B. So it will not uh, uh, get shifted if I just uh, want uh, to compute the monodromy around these points over here. But if I want to compute the analytic continuation along some more complicated contour, one gets this, this, this shift. So what we have then is a kind of uh, uh, operator mo valued monodromy which involves uh, simultaneously uh, um, this shift uh, operators by integer multiples of B and uh, well, uh, some trigonometric functions of uh, intermediate momentum. I have not explained this, but uh, well, uh, most probably you uh, will be, uh, you will accept the statement that uh, by well, choosing a slightly uh, better normalization uh, of the uh, of solutions of the hypergeometric equation, one can make uh, the connection matrix trigonometric instead of uh, expressed in terms of gamma functions. So this is basically uh, this uh, statement here. And now, <coughs> uh, the miracle which happens for central charge equal to one is that, well, this uh, operator uh, of multiplication by this function commutes uh, with the shift operator uh, uh, translating the intermediate momentum by B. So these uh, operators are then uh, simultaneously diagonalized by this uh, kind of Fourier transformed uh, conformal blocks. And so uh, these combinations are now characterized by the usual SL2C monodromy instead of operator valued monodromy that you have here. And therefore, so uh, out of these uh, um, linear combinations, you can produce the uh, fundamental solution of your uh, Fuchsian system, or more precisely, one, just one line uh, <coughs> of this fundamental solution and the second line um, uh, is, um, in, is constructed analogously. Okay, and now uh, uh, this ultimately leads to analogous uh, representation for the, uh, for the tau function. And uh, so this is uh, the Fourier transform of the corresponding C equal to one conformal block. And uh, using the uh, known combinatorial series representation of F, 
So this ultimately leads to an explicit series representation for, for a penalized six term function. So all of the coefficients in this, uh, uh, in this series are known explicitly. They can be uh, checked, of course, if you just plug this uh, uh, expansion into differential equation. But uh, actually, this uh, series can be the series uh, representation can also be proved um, uh, rigorously without any relation to CFT. What you do is that you first uh, uh, prove a Fred Holm uh, determinant representation for this uh, general solution, and uh, then, well, uh, expanding the determinant in a suitable basis gives you just this CFT formula. Okay, now, <coughs> so this was the uh, relation of conformal blocks to, uh, to, to, to Penelope's story. Now let me discuss uh, uh, the connection to Hoyne equation. So if you want um, to relate uh, Hoyne equation to CFT, we have to consider somewhat different uh, um, uh, case. Uh, we have to consider a certain scaling limit of parameters of conformal blocks. So we have to uh, send uh, all of these uh, deltas, all of the conformal dimensions to infinity uh, and sim simultaneously send to infinity the central charge, but in a correlated way so that uh, uh, this, this product uh, remains uh, fixed, and uh, so this product uh, will eventually become, uh, uh, so such products will become uh, monodromy parameters of the corresponding Hoyne equation. So uh, <coughs> uh, there, are, uh, there is a famous zomological conjecture about this uh, quasi-classical limit. So first of all, uh, there is a statement about existence. So <coughs> maybe I have to say that there is uh, not so much analytic content uh, in here. So this is not really an asymptotic, uh, uh, really asymptotic statement. What, uh, what this sta uh, statement tells you is that if you take this formal series, you take its logarithm, so it gives you another formal series, and in this uh, second formal series, you, uh, uh, you, you, you um, well, you, uh, you, you transform, uh, you, you compute the scaling limit of, uh, of the coefficients using these rules that I gave you before, then all of the coefficients will scale as uh, one over B squared. And this is uh, something non-trivial. I think this conjecture is not uh, proved yet, despite uh, claims uh, that exist, uh, exist in the literature. And, well, this uh, conjecturally existing uh, new formal series is called quasi-classical conformal block. And uh, as I told you before, it is this uh, function here, which, uh, well, in the simplest four-point case, gives the accessory parameter function in Hoy. <coughs> so the expansion of this uh, quasi-classical conformal block uh, can be, uh, well, w one uh, doesn't have uh, explicit formulas which are as nice as for finite central charge, but still this expansion can be systematically computed to arbitrary desired order just by well, re-expanding the logarithm and carefully computing, computing the limit. The, the coefficients become more and more complicated, but, well, okay, this is still algorithmically computable. And now what you can do is that you can uh, just take the series which you get on the differential equation side, you, get, uh, you take the series which you compute on the CFT side, you compare them to, to order, I don't know, 20, and uh, they match, uh, they match perfectly. So one way uh, to restate this uh, conjecture is uh, the following. Uh, I think I need white. 
Yes. So, <clears throat> uh, what I forgot to say before is uh, uh, I forgot to explain the relation between Penlevé uh, 6 and Hoyn equation. So, it turns out that if you transform uh, your uh, linear system into a second order uh, scalar ODE, this is what I'm saying here. So you obtain an equation of, of which is still of Hoyne type, but it now contains an extra apparent singularity. And uh, the position of this extra apparent singularity is precisely this Q which appeared as the zero of the off-diagonal element of matrix A of Z. So, <coughs> Uh, yes, and uh, so the uh, Hoyne equation is therefore related to uh, Penlevé functions in the uh, case where this Q goes to zero, one, or it is a fixed point, or uh, you have a movable pole of Penlevé. <coughs> right. And so now I come to uh, I come back to here to this uh, interpretation. So, uh, <coughs> most probably, uh, you know that uh, Penlevé 6 can be viewed as a non-autonomous uh, uh, Hamiltonian system, and therefore, uh, we have, we can write a symplectic form, which, well, naively depends on time, but in fact, doesn't, okay? And so, uh, this uh, uh, two form we can compute in two separate limits. So one limit would be when uh, so this uh, Penlevé time goes to a fixed singularity. So let's let's send t to zero, and in this case, the symplectic form gives you a certain expression in terms of uh, this monodromy data that I have introduced. So this mon lo some local monodromy. Uh, some local uh, coordinates on M. On the other hand, one can uh, send uh, uh, this uh, T uh, to, let's say, a movable pole of uh, Penlevé 6, and then what you get is actually uh, an expression like this one. So it will be now expressed in terms of a uh, Hoyne accessory parameter and, uh, well, the position of the fourth singularity. Ah, this is actually a bad notation or con confusing notation. So let's put here S and here S over S. So S is the fourth singularity in Hoyne equation, whereas T is Penlevé time. So before I used the same notation for this fourth singularity in Penlevé and Hoyne, but this is not a, this was not a very good choice, right? And so we know that this form is actually independent on uh, T, therefore you, you must have equality here, and therefore uh, the form like this one must be closed. Therefore it uh, uh, gives the differential, or at least locally, it is represented by one differential on the space of monodromy data. And uh, we can write uh, the accessory parameter as the uh, partial derivative of this W with respect to S times S. So this you, uh, will, you would recognize here as the Zamolochikov relation. And, uh, well, this, uh, the second monodromy parameter is given by the same formula. So uh, another way to restate the Zamolochikov conjecture is, therefore, uh, to say that uh, this, uh, this quasi-classical conformal block is nothing but the uh, generating function of the canonical transformation between two uh, pairs of Darbu coordinates on M, one of which is given by this monodromy exponents, and the second one is related to Hoyne equation data. Okay. Good. So now uh, I, I have to give some uh, explanation 
of, uh, of this conjecture. So the explanation which exists in the literature, the only one that I know, is uh, to make even more complicated conjecture. So <coughs> uh, what we do is the following. So we take a conformal block, uh, which uh, we uh, were originally interested in, we add one degenerate insertion, and the momentum associated to this degenerate in insertion, so it is not, uh, so the corresponding momentum, P12, uh, it is uh, of order one when V goes to zero. Okay, so it is not uh, like all the other momenta. And so when we, when we add such a, uh, such a light insertion to our conformal block, so we make uh, the, uh, the following answers. So we s assume that uh, uh, this conformal block has this WKB type asymptotics uh, as B goes to zero, and plug in this uh, uh, WKB ansatz into uh, the BPZ constraint, into this PDE, it actually becomes an ODE for the amplitude psi, where uh, the, um, uh, so these uh, accessory parameters uh, come from the uh, derivatives of the uh, quasi-classical conformal block with respect to positions of heavy fields, here, here, and all of the fields in here. <coughs> and we, of course, recover the usual Hoyne uh, in the case, in the four point, uh, in the four point case. <coughs> now, in order to make uh, further progress, in order to proceed with this uh, Hoyne connection formula, we can uh, notice that uh, the structure of operator product expansions uh, implies that, uh, so these amplitudes that we had uh, they are not just some solutions of Hoyne, they are Frobenius solutions associated to, uh, so for example, if we place the, de the, de the degenerate field on this leg, this will be a non-normalized Frobenius solution at uh, uh, regular singular point z equal to zero. If we uh, place, uh, if I have the corresponding picture, if we had placed uh, the, de the degenerate field in here, then we would have a Frobenius solution associated to singular point z equal to one, and so on. And this uh, allows actually to compute this uh, uh, normalization uh, coefficients um, almost explicitly. So basically all, all we have to use is uh, are the known op operator product expansions of degenerate uh, fields with generic primaries. And what you get is that, uh, so this uh, conformal block have, has <coughs> this behavior as uh, z goes to zero. And when we further send the Liouville parameter b to zero in order to get to the quasi-classical limit, so this gets to what you want to have a uh, Frobenius solution. And uh, the normalization coefficient, you can also compute uh, the corresponding asymptotics and uh, it gives the, uh, the, the, the factors uh, like this, which appear in the normalization. So I think I will not uh, go into the details of these uh, calculations. Uh, uh, if you are interested, please uh, ask me. I will just uh, uh, state the final result which, uh, which follows from this reasoning. So <clears throat> suppose uh, that we have uh, two pairs of normalized Frobenius solutions of Hoyne at uh, z equal to zero and z equal to one. So as I uh, explained before, so the connection between uh, these two bases can be expressed uh, in terms of a single function C. And uh, this, uh, the statement is that this, uh, this connection function C 
is given by uh, the derivatives of the quasi-classical conformal block with, uh, with respect to this local uh, monotremy exponent with respect to external momentum. And uh, the prefactor uh, which you have in front of the exponential is uh, the, uh, well, essentially the hypergeometric, uh, the hypergeometric connection coefficient. So this is the uh, CFT prediction. And uh, so how does it work in practice? So you basically generate uh, the expansion of conformal block using your favorite method either the commutation relations of the Virasoro algebra or combinatorial series coming from the correspondence with uh, uh, supersymmetric Young-Mills or the of recursion and so on. So you can generate uh, any number of terms in this expansion here. Then you have to compute the uh, composite monodromy exponent from the homologic of relation. So basically, basically you have to feed uh, this uh, expansion to mathematical asymptotic solve and express, uh, uh, and, uh, express the series for this uh, composite monodromy in terms of uh, accessory parameter. Then you take uh, this and this and you plug uh, into into this formula coming from CFT. So then uh, you will get contributions of two types. So uh, you will have uh, some rational, uh, I, I mean, the, the coefficients uh, uh, of different powers of uh, T uh, in, this, in the perturbative expansion of the connection coefficient, they will be of two types. So one uh, uh, type will come from from here, uh, so this will be some rational uh, uh, functions of local monodromy exponents and accessory parameter, but you will also have to uh, expand these this gammas in uh, inverse powers of t, and this will, be, uh, will produce some polygamma function. So just uh, as an example, so this is how the result uh, will look like. So this is the hypergeometric connection. This is the first uh, term uh, in the series, which, uh, so I I I in the series, but in, in principle, you can compute any desired uh, number of terms uh, in this expansion using CFT. Okay, and this, uh, uh, this CFT prediction was uh, uh, successfully tested numerically by uh, these people, Bonelli, Tanzini, Yosa, and Paner. And uh, so the question uh, that I would like to discuss in the time, in the remaining time, is how can one, uh, how can one actually check this, uh, these predictions analytically? So here <laughs> we will use the result that was that has uh, already appeared in the talk by Professor Grosdanov. So this Darbu theorem. So actually one can express the uh, connection matrix, the connection coefficients using the uh, large order asymptotics of uh, the expansion uh, coefficients of Frobenius solution. So this goes under the name of uh, Darbu theorem. So compared to this talk, we do not even need uh, to know the position of the branch points uh, of, uh, uh, <coughs> uh, of functions appearing in the Darbu theorem. So we know them from the differential equation. So all we need to know is uh, this W of one, uh, <coughs> which is precisely the connection uh, the coefficient of the connection matrix. So if we consider a linear second order ODE with an arbitrary potential of this form, so the only hypothesis that we make on uh, this uh, function U is that uh, it has to be holomorphic inside a circle of radius greater than one. So <coughs> introducing uh, the Frobenius solution by the normalized Frobenius solutions by the same formulas as before, 
the connection uh, function is given by, uh, well, this, this, this limiting formula. So the limiting value of the, uh, the well, the limiting asymptotics of the uh, um, expansion coefficient uh, of Frobenius solution. So now let us, um, so this is a general result which was uh, obtained by uh, Schapke and Schmidt uh, 40 years ago. But actually this is a direct uh, consequence of Darboux theory. So it could have been obtained like 100 years before. So now let us try to apply uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, theorem by Schafke and Schmidt to uh, all uh, equations of Hoyne type which have two function singularity. And the simplest of them is this uh, reduced confluent Hoyne uh, where the potential is written here. So what you have to notice is that I parameterize the potential in such a way that when this term is absent, so lambda will be our small parameter. So when this term is absent, then uh, this is hypergeometric, okay? And in the hypergeometric case, we just, uh, we, we, we know the solution of the connection problem. We, we can find all of these coefficients very explicitly. So introducing this uh, rescaled coefficients, the, uh, the theorem uh, looks as follows. So the connection function for the reduced confluent Hoyne is essentially the limiting uh, value of the uh, sequence uh, given by this three-term uh, recurrence relation. So if uh, the parameter lambda is equal to zero, so then all A's are just one, okay? So we are in the hypergeometric case. Now, if uh, we switch on the parameter lambda, then we can solve this um, a problem formally uh, in the form of this uh, infinite determinant. And we can uh, construct the expansion of uh, the determinant in powers of lambda. <coughs> but what is uh, actually even more efficient if we, if we want to avoid nested sums is just uh, to consider the expansion of the logarithm of this quantity because uh, here we just need to compute traces of powers of this three diagonal matrix. And uh, as you see, uh, so uh, the expressions which appear here are sums of some uh, uh, well, rational functions of K, which means that uh, uh, all of these can be uh, systematically and algorithmically computed uh, and expressed in terms of, uh, well, some rational functions of parameters and polygonals, right? And now we can just compare with the prediction of this Trieste formula coming from CFT, and uh, again, we find a complete match. Okay, so there is, uh, there is also some combinatorial formula for the same quantity, so I think I will skip this. Yeah, so the, <coughs> the ultimate, uh, the final result for reduced uh, confluent point is, is this. So the connection matrix is, uh, can be written as a, in the form of a sum of the logarithm of such uh, infinite fractions so if you want uh, a perturbative expansion, all, all you have to do is to truncate this uh, infinite fraction at the desired order, expand the result, compute this corresponding sums with respect to K, and uh, well, you have, you, have the, you have the desired coefficients. And uh, well, up to some uh, minor technical subtleties, the same kind of uh, result holds for uh, Hoyne equation. So uh, again, uh, the connection function is, uh, can be expressed in terms of uh, infinite fractions with some rational uh, coefficients alpha k and beta k. So again, this, all of this can be <coughs> algorithmically computed to arbitrary order, and we have uh, a complete match with CFT. Okay, so uh, let me uh, 
Now come to conclusions. So the uh, uh, one immediate conclusion is, is that this uh, Trieste formula is most probably correct. Uh, but we can uh, uh, compute, uh, we can compute uh, an equivalent expansion without uh, any reference to CFT. All we actually need is the old uh, Darboux theory. It should be possible to uh, extend uh, this method to uh, include irregular singularity. So I, today I didn't speak at all about the irregular case, but in, in this case we also have some CFT predictions. But would, uh, what would be uh, probably even more interesting to do is uh, to find a rigorous proof of this uh, formula because <coughs> we, uh, we can uh, actually define now the, uh, this, this function W by the, uh, by the Zamolochikov relation. So, uh, so basically we define uh, W in terms of the accessory parameter function. And then uh, <coughs> the statement is that the connection matrix is expressed in terms of the very same function. So in terms of accessory parameter. So this, uh, the, the statement now uh, um, no longer involves uh, CFT quantities. So one can try to prove it rigorously and I think this, uh, this should be possible to do using, um, well, considering the connection problem for Penlevé 6 tau function between a fixed uh, singularity and uh, um, movable zero. Um, uh, there are more questions, but I think maybe it's uh, a, a good point to stop. So I will just leave the slide if, uh, in case anybody has questions and I will stop here. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Thanks, Alec. Uh, questions, comments? So you, 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 sh you showed Pelevé 6 and then you said Pelevé 5 and 3. When, and what about the other Pelevé 1, 1, 2, and 4? Well, the other Pelevé uh, are more complicated. So I I in a way, uh, uh, when you go to the irregular situation, uh, then uh, some of the uh, uh, expansions of the corresponding general solution to Pelevé so some regimes uh, can be treated uh, in the very same way. So there where you have expansions of regular type, uh, but uh, in some other re critical regimes, uh, well, uh, the method simply doesn't work. So uh, this can be understood maybe in the following way. So. <coughs> So you see, if we have uh, the hypergeometric function f to one, right? So it is very uh, easy uh, to compute the limit uh, to f one one. So to go from f uh, to one to to Whittaker and then uh, to Bessel. And so this is basically the transition from Penlevé six to Penlevé five and to Penlevé three. Uh, and, uh, uh, but on the other hand, if, um, uh, e e if we want uh, to uh, somehow go from uh, this function here to f to zero, okay. so this is more difficult. So to, to, to compute uh, stocks uh, coefficients uh, of the Whittaker equation in terms of uh, hypergeometrics. So this is sort of more, more, more difficult problem. Well, of course, it's doable in the hypergeometric case, but in the, uh, in the, in the Penlevé setting, uh, this is, these problems are much more difficult to overcome. So what comes out is that, for example, in Penlevé 1 uh, case, uh, 
So the, uh, the series uh, that you obtain, so you have no CFT interpretation for them. So what you can do is that, uh, so you take the leading asymptotics, which is known from the literature, say from the paper of Kapayev, Kitayev in the 80s. So you plug it into the differential equation. Uh, you compute uh, as many terms uh, as you want, and you see that the asymptotic expansion sort of organizes into a very similar structure uh, as before. So you have this Fourier transform kind of structure, but we do not have any uh, algebraic interpretation of, of this quantity. So it would be very tempting uh, to call it C equal to one uh, irregular conformal work, but we don't know what that is. Okay. And uh, also we, uh, there is some conceptual obstacle to constructing a Fredholm determinant representation for the general solution of P1. So it's easy for P1, 6, 5, and 3, but I don't know how to do it for P1. I guess my question is somewhat related because uh, it, it, I was going to ask about what happens in the regular point. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you said you'd, you, you don't know, but like, do you? Oh, okay, maybe let me try to, uh, to give one more pictorial uh, answer. So, <clears throat> so ultimately, the fact that we are able to treat uh, the equation like pen level six uh, is related to the fact that, uh, so this four punctured sphere uh, can be cut into two, three punctured spheres uh, by a circle, and uh, at the level of uh, the Riemann-Hilbert problem associated to, uh, to pen level six, this means that, so you can reduce it to a, a Riemann-Hilbert problem with some essentially hypergeometric jump uh, uh, on a single circle. Now, when, uh, when uh, you want to do pen level one, so the truly irregular case, like the most complicated equation from, from my point of view. So the picture which would replace this picture here would be uh, the pentagon, right? So we, we have something like, uh, uh, well, one uh, regular hole with five cusps, which correspond, well, basically to Stokes rays, where you have jumps. And uh, so the, the analog of this uh, uh, circle that I used to cut, in this case, would be something which goes from one cusp to another. So you, 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 have, to, uh, you have to decompose your Riemann-Hilbert problem uh, into, uh, well, so, so you start with something like this. So you have jumps by Stokes matrices. And uh, uh, so what it becomes, uh, OK, so I have to think. So I think that, that you bring the corresponding Riemann-Hilbert problem to something like, like this here. And uh, so the, the, this line that I symbolically use for, for, for cutting uh, the pentagon into a tri triangle and a quadrilateral, so this is uh, the, the contour which goes from here to here. And so the, the, uh, like the conceptual problem uh, uh, that we have to solve in order to construct this Friedholm determinant representation for general solution of P1 is that, well, we, 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 we do not have exact solutions uh, of uh, this like elementary, uh, more elementary Riemann-Hilbert problems, like this one for uh, a quadrilateral and the counterpart for, for triangle. We only have asymptotic solutions, okay? so. Uh, so, so if we uh, try to use something like this 
to construct threshold determinant representation, it, it will not be exact. It will be only like asymptotically exact up to exponentially exact, whatever it means. Yeah. So I don't know if that answers uh, the question, but this is the best I can uh, propose. Thank you. Um, a very naive question. So in physics applications, um, what's often very interesting is um, to know how the connection coefficients depend on the parameters. Yeah, so could, could, could you in, speak in, louder, physics, please? in physics applications, yeah. of course, what's often very interesting is to know how the connection coefficients depend on the parameters of the differential equation. Yeah. Uh, right, and a lot of the pictures show this week by various authors, they precisely come from connection coefficients for the whole equation, depending on two parameters, which would be frequency and the wavelengths in uh, the language of physics. So what are general statements about analyticity or other properties of the dependence of the connection coefficients on the parameters that sit in that potential? Uh, I think this is very compli uh, complicated question, actually. You mean on the Hoyne side, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, <coughs> so we have this uh, uh, we have this uh, series for the uh, uh, for the connection coefficient that we can construct either uh, using CFT or uh, or Darbu, and uh, there are good reasons to believe that this series uh, is convergent, uh, but. Uh, uh, we do not uh, know the radius on, of convergence. So uh, we do suspect uh, that uh, the corresponding function has um, uh, developed some branch points in the complex plane of parameters, but we don't know where these uh, branch points are, right? So e e even uh, in the simplest uh, case, uh, so, so for forget about Hoyne, take Mathieu equation, right? So in Mathieu equation, you 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 uh, you, you have no parameter uh, no parameters in the equation except for uh, uh, for the variables like like this t and the uh, the energy, and uh, so so you can show of course that um, uh, so this uh, the energy as a fun function of Mathieu coupling constant doesn't have. Uh, uh, singularity is close to the real axis. So th this is basically the consequence of the self-adjointness of the Hamiltonian. But uh, when you move uh, away from the real axis, then you have uh, some sporadic branch points which appear and people s have studied uh, uh, the, the position. They try to determine the positions of these uh, sporadic branch points uh, numerically. Okay, but, uh, the, well, this gives you some crazy structure, some crazy, crazy numbers. Uh, it would be nice to be able to, um, to compute them somehow analytically, but I think nobody knows how to do that. So, so basically what you want to do is, let's say for Mathieu, is, <coughs> uh, so you, um, Okay, so the energy, uh, uh, so the spectral curve, the, uh, the, the, the energy as a function of coupling constant is, ex, uh, is given by a uh, Hill determinant, right? And so what you are looking at is uh, the uh, double so the, the values of this coupling constant where the Hill determinant will have multiple uh, roots, okay? And this, this is something which you can do only numerically, I think. Any other questions? Okay, let's discuss further over coffee. Let's thank Oleg again. Thank you.